For me, there's no better time to reread the Harry Potter series than when it's cold outside, a little bit drizzly, and you can really get yourself comfortable and immerse yourself in the world of Hogwarts and magic that is Harry Potter. Looking at the first three books, I want to talk a little bit about my experience of rereading them this time round. Sitting down to reread the Harry Potter series, for me, it always feels like you're sitting down to go back home. There's no wonder that at the premiere of the final Harry Potter film, J.K. Rowling in her speech said, whether it's through page or screen, Hogwarts will always be there to welcome you home. And for me, it's those first three books which really help to capture that essence of homeliness and of being back somewhere that is really comforting. My first memories of the Harry Potter world is The Whomping Willow, because I used to have a friend in primary school who was reading The Prisoner of Azkaban and drawing The Whomping Willow for me, telling me all about the story, and I was absolutely encaptured by that imagination. My brother also had a copy of The Goblet of Fire at home, and I remember sneaking into his room just to hold the book and to feel like one day I was going to read this. I must have only been nine or ten years old, but I remember being so excited to get to it. The narrow path had opened suddenly onto the edge of a great black lake. Perched atop a high mountain on the other side, its many windows sparkling in the starry sky, was a vast castle with many turrets and towers. Within these first three books, we explore Hogwarts Castle just as Harry explores Hogwarts Castle, but there's something special about the way that Harry attaches himself to the castle, the way that Harry builds a home there, and with him, we build a home within the books. And whilst this is a children's book, the descriptions aren't as in-depth as we would expect from an adult's book, we still get hints of food, of magic, of fireplaces and common rooms, which just evoke this feeling of comfort and joy and something that is akin to our own home. And it's not just through the way the castle is described to us that makes us feel that we are at home. It's also through the sense of family which is developed during these three books in particular. In The Philosopher's Stone, Harry learns about the reality of his parents, who they were and how they died. And then in The Chamber of Secrets, he begins to find his place within the Weasley family. He learns what it means to be loved by a mother, just like Mrs Weasley. And then in The Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry learns about his father and his father's friends. He learns about Professor Lupin, his father's best friend, and Sirius Black, his own godfather. And even through the friendships that Harry makes, do we reconsider the meaning of home and how we can find home within others. The way that friendship is displayed in these first three books truly enhances that sense of magic. Much like how the Hogwarts Express is that transportation device to Hogwarts, uh, the world of magic, so are the books a transportation device for us to find our way into this same world. And it's the way that they're written the way that they go full circle in each and every book that really makes us feel so comforted and feel like we're returning back to something safe. The first three books are written in a whimsical style, a wonderfully magical writing style. And although they go full circle, like I said, neither story stagnates because each one develops, each one ages as Harry and his friends also age. And in The Prisoner of Azkaban particularly is when we really get a sense of them growing up and them understanding more the reality of what is going on. 
This sets us up in good stead for the next books, which really do help to delve further into the darkness of the magical world. Whilst in these three books, that magic is still light, it is still friendly, it is still fun. I particularly found The Prisoner of Azkaban quite emotional in this reading, not only in the way that Hermione and Harry's friendship develops in such a caring and loving way, but also in the way that Harry learns about his father, his family, his godfather, and the way that he reacts to their influence in his life. Harry, please, said Hermione, her eyes now shining with tears, please be sensible. Black did a terrible, terrible thing, but uh, don't put yourself in danger. It's what Black wants. Oh, oh, Harry, you're playing right into Black hands if you went looking for him. Your mum and dad wouldn't want you to get hurt, would they? They'd never want you to go looking for Black. I'll never know what they'd wanted because, thanks to Black, I've never spoken to them, said Harry shortly. There was a silence. But despite this emotion, this sadness, we are safe in the knowledge of this cyclical pattern that Harry's going to return to King's Cross, he's going to return to Hogwarts, and everything will be okay. That is until the next book start, and we realise that perhaps everything might not be okay. But we'll still always have Hogwarts as home.